Hello, beautiful people. Shalom, money makers. I want to talk to you guys about the crypto market. It has been kind of slow. You might say, I'll be slow. Yes, it's been kind of slow since the Ethereum ETF uh, has been approved. But I'm going to share with you something that could be the indication that we we're almost there. We're almost there. Remember I told you I felt something was going to change, right? And, and we got the, the change in the probability of the Ethereum ETF and then we had a, a pump. I'm going to tell you a story that I heard today uh, that could mean that we're on the precipice. I'm also going to share with you something that is not so good, but could be good for crypto. <laughs> and we'll talk a little bit about Bitcoin and Shiba Inu and Ethereum and Pepe and all the good stuff. All I ask from you is that you give me a beautiful smile to send out the good, good vibes, smishity smash that like button because likes are for free, right? We like free stuff. Why not give a like, right? Uh, and let's get into it. So currently, uh, I, I have to transfer the Shiba Shake. Don't get angry at me. I'm, I'm lazy. <laughs> I have to open up the old computer, right? That's uh, it. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so currently the price of Shiba Inu is at 0 0.402476. We got Bitcoin at 69,000. So a smidge under um, 70,000. We got Ethereum at 3,700. Uh, Pepe is up again. Uh, it created a new high uh, for a second uh, and then came back down here today. Um, Jasmine up 3.74. Beam up 4%. Uh, uh, but if you take a look here, right, and we go and we look, uh, and we look at today's top movers, you can see that the, the big movers, right, have been uh, outside of Pepe, which is already top 20. Holy smokes, right? Um, most of the movers, right, are 30, 39, 50, right? Uh, the only, the, 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 the highest here is near, right? Uh, and we got a doge, which is also up 4% today, right? But for the most part, you can see the most movers are uh, assets that are uh, Uniswap as well as 19. So it jumped in just now into the top 20. But for the most part, it's not top 15 assets that are moving uh, big today, right? Ethereum, Bitcoin. Uh, you know, XRP, BNB, uh, they're, they're not moving, right, big time. You can see half a percent, 0 0.2 percent, 0 0.1, 1 1.1, only Doge, right, 4 percent here. Near 4 percent, and Uniswap 11, Pepe 8, right? But for the most part, you saw not a lot of movements. I want to share with you the story now. Okay, so today my dad came over, my parents, not my just my dad, my mom and my dad, and my dad told me that last night they got together with uh, friends. Now they are, my dad is uh, 69. So he's, you know, it's a sexy number, of course. Uh, <laughs> but he's, you know, you know, almost 70, right? And they met up with friends and they were talking and his uh, business partner started talking to him about cryptocurrency. And of course, I've talked to my dad about cryptocurrency. And he's like, you know what? You invest in the cryptocurrency. I'll invest in what I know. Right? Uh, but at this uh, get together, they were talking about cryptocurrency. And, and his friend was explaining about fiat and about what is this and what is that? What is what is Bitcoin? And, what? and you know, that was a very indi you know, strong indication to me we are almost there. Why? Because when you have people that are, first of all, older generation, right, that are looking at something new-ish, right, something that's considered risky, although they are investors, uh, so, you know, they're uh, keen to investing and to taking risks, right? If someone that, you know, just has their mortgage in their house and no investments, it's a little bit different. But someone that's already, you know, invested in all kinds of things, um, is open, you know, a little bit more, right, to to opportunities. The fact that they, with their friends, were talking about the crypto market um, tells you that we're almost at the zone where you know everybody's going to be talking about crypto because it's getting to a, a sense where people are, oh, wait a second, it's it's at its highs, right? Bitcoin is at its highs. The crypto market is getting into the cycle. I um, mean, the four-year cycle is getting into the crescendo part of potentially right soon, the crescendo part of the of the cycle. Uh, and so many people, I think, are sitting on their hands and waiting to see what's going to happen. I told a story a few uh, months ago when it was my son's birthday, but we we had it a little a few months later because of the uh, 
uh, war, <laughs> right? Uh, there, was, there, was, there were missiles flying when his birthday uh, occurred. Um, so um, we had a few months later, but at the time, uh, I met uh, one of the fathers and I said, you know, uh, Bitcoin has been doing really good. It's up, you know, I think it was around like, uh, this is uh, this, the, this was in December, right? So in December was before the, the uh, Bitcoin ETF uh, was uh, was approved, right? And, uh, you know, let me just see what the price is because I'm kind of interested here. Uh, you can't see what I'm doing, but uh, it was around 40,000, right? And I told him, hey, you know what? I, I, I told him, uh, this is what I do, uh, YouTube and this and that. Uh, and he's like, oh yeah, I remember Bitcoin. Like this, and this is a guy that, you know, has a, a nice, uh, you know, has a, you know, a, a duplex apartment and has a good job and works, you know, in a, in a good job. Uh, and uh, something in finance, and I told him, you know, it's like at 40,000, it was already 15,000, it's gone up, you know, almost uh, 2x from, uh, 3x, sorry, from the low, and he was like, yeah, I don't know, tell me when it gets uh, to, to, you know, back to the all-time high. So then I saw him a, f uh, a few weeks later, and I was like, hey, listen, you know, the, 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 it was approved and everything, and it's, it's almost at the all-time high, and then he told me, no, 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 you know, it's, it's already too high. When it comes back, tell me, right? We're going to get to a situation where it's going to be too too high for, for people to... <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> I had a, a toast before. <laughs> it's going to get too high for people to ignore it anymore, right? And you see already the 70-year-olds are talking about it. That means that we're almost there where it's going to be too high for them to, to for normal people to ignore it, right? And they're going to be saying to themselves, and, and you know, I'm 37, right? So... This uh, gentleman that, that, were, that I talked to, he has um, older kids. So he's probably like 45, something like that, right? Um, he's He's been through a few cycles, right? And so have I, right? But, you know, at the first cycle I was uh, that I first started to get interested in, in crypto, it was in 2012. I was still a university student, engineering student, so I didn't have any money to invest, right? I was living, you know, on, on nickels and dimes. Um, and in 2017 already, I was able to, to nibble, right? I already had a good job. This person, 45, he's already been a few a few cycles, right? Uh, especially in the US, 45 as well, right? Because in the US, you guys start earlier than we start here, right? Because we have the military service. So people around the world, they're going to be looking at this as, wow, you know, I already missed these few cycles, right? This time, I'm not going to be the, the sucker sitting on the sideline. We're seeing this with big institutions, right? We're seeing this with, uh, we're seeing this with uh, pre presidential candidates, <laughs> with Donald Trump coming and saying, very positive and open-minded to cryptocurrency companies. And by the way, Donald is about the same age as, as my parents, right? A little bit older, but in all things relating to this new and burgeoning industry our country must be the leader in the field there is no second place crooked Joe Biden on the other hand the worst president in the history of our country I don't know about that but wants it to die a slow and painful death there will never happen with me uh, and you see like you see Donald right you see uh, my parents friends my, you know the, that generation they're interested and they have a lot more money than mid-generation right of course there's outliers but for the the baby boomers have a ton of money they have a lot of real estate that they bought in you know 40 50 years ago that's worth a lot more money today uh and and they of course have uh compound interest uh, my dad told me that he put he was working and someone said uh you know put something you know like a special thing at work and you can put a few hundred bucks in every month right and he put it in and this fund and he left the u.s right so this was i'm um, talking i was nine so this is about um about 30 years ago that few thousand dollars is now two hundred thousand right so compound interest they've made a lot of money and that was just something small that he invested of course other people larger investments it grows exponentially we know the compound interest is is bananas when you get to the higher levels right you know a million dollars already 10 percent is a hundred thousand k a hundred thousand not hundred thousand k a hundred thousand and then you know two million is you're making two hundred thousand every year on ten percent and then three three right and you're you're so then, you know, once you get 10 million, you're double, you're getting a million dollars every two years, right? And so that that's how they accumulate a lot of, of the, the massive amounts. 
The problem is, right, is that the U.S. national debt hit a record of $34.6 trillion in April, up $1.6 trillion since September of 2023. The total U.S. debt has increased by 47% or $11 trillion in just four years. In other words, there is now $267,000 of federal debt for every U.S. taxpayer. U.S. is on track to double in just eight years, rising from $20 trillion in 2017 to $40 trillion in 2025. Meanwhile, Anna's annual interest rate expense could reach $1.6 trillion by the end of the year if the Fed leaves rates unchanged. The U.S. government needs to lower interest rates. I don't know what they're going to do. But this, these numbers should make it clear to everybody that you need an alternative. I don't know what that alternative is should be it's up to you but you can't leave your livelihood and your future in the hands of the government the government that tells you pay taxes right and then they go and they print money right the money that they have is backed by the fact that they can make money by taking taxes from you and by selling bonds and by doing commerce right but basically it's backed by nothing right it's not like in the olden times when people, you know, the king would, you know, get goats and, and gold and silver, and then he would use that to fund whatever he needed to fund. He didn't have a way to, to print more gold, or well, he could mine for gold, which was an opportunity, right? Um, and, and, you know, there's a famous story of, um, I, I forget which country, um, it's, it's, uh, I'm sorry if I'm, you know, I don't remember the whole story, but there was, was a king from Africa that uh, had a lot of gold. I think it's from, he was from Mali. I'm not, I don't, if, let me know in the comment section if I'm uh, messing the country up. He had a ton of gold and he was really rich, right? And then he made a trip to Egypt and he was giving gold out along the way. And then suddenly everybody had gold, right? All the people had gold and there was a gold inflation. The gold lost a lot of its value because it was not as scarce as it was before because he was handing out all the gold along the trip to Egypt, right? So that those things kind of happen in the past, but for the most part, they couldn't print more money, right? Well, now they can do that. And the fact is that it's the U.S. is going to have an issue, right? It might not be this year. It might not be next year. It could be in 20, 30 years. But I know that most of you are about my age. So we don't want to get to, uh, you know, our retirement ages, our 60, 70 ages, ages, right? When our government, you know, doesn't have money to give us for our pension because, you know, we only had our pension funds, our 401ks, our IRAs, right? Uh, well, those are connected to the stock market but we don't know what's going to happen we don't know so we have to be as diversified as as we can and and be the masters of our futures right so it's going to be very interesting to see uh, you know going 20 30 years into the future what what's going to be right will crypto still be a thing right i hope so <laughs> um will what will be the situation of the us of china of uh, India, which is on the rise, right? Uh, you know, bigger countries like Nigeria and Africa that's going to have a massive amount of people. Um, you know, it's it's going to be very interesting. Well, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what the world is like, right? Who knows, right? You know, it could totally be changed. It will be interesting. If you go back 30 years to the 90s, I mean, yes, things have changed, but not really, right? I mean, uh, um, Things have changed, but not like sci-fi change. You know what I mean? Like it's not so, like if someone came into 2020. I don't know about 2024 because you know we have a lot more AI now and, and robots and things like that. <laughs> Maybe in five years, but if you go into like 2019, 2018, I mean things weren't that. You know, smartphones, okay. Uh, High-speed internet, okay. Like. In the 90s, they, there was internet, right? We had uh, cell phones, but, you know, smartphones came around 2000. I mean, it's not like crazy change of technology, right? It's Life has become easier, social media, right? But for the most part, it's not like totally different, right? I wonder in 30 years from now if it's going to be like totally different. Like when my kids are my age, will it be totally different? Or will it be like, you know, we have more technology, we have AI, you know, like... What's what's gonna be? I think I think we're gonna have a big jump here. I think 
but you know they thought in uh, in the 90s by now we'd have flying cars and we don't have them yet <laughs> we're almost at autonomous so we're not at flying yet so um it will be interesting uh to see uh, i think that we're, we don't have flying cars i think the governments don't won't don't want it like i think like the airplane lobbyists are, are torpedoing flying cars i don't know why i think that's what's happening <laughs> Um, if they let people fly and then people are going to get drunk and they're going to be flying. Right? Uh, so I think that's that's the reason why, right? They're like, no, humans are not ready for flying cars. <laughs> we need like pilots and things like that. So so it's, it will be interesting to see uh, what happens here. Uh, I wanted to talk about Shiba Inu and uh, 5.8 uh, trillion here, but uh, it's already going a little bit long. So we'll talk about that another time. Don't forget to smash the like button. Check out the links in the description down below. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you next time. Of course, not financial advice. And always do your own due diligence before you decide to invest. And like I always say, let's make a lot of money.